Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the Milky Way galaxy, our home, and how apparently it turns out our galaxy is a bit of a thief. Well, at least galactic thief. It steals stuff from other galaxies. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So in a nutshell, what this study here that you can also find in the description below proposes and talks about is that over time our galaxy the Milky Way may have sort of unofficially borrowed and kept a lot of smaller galaxies from our satellites. Now it might not make sense yet, but let me show you what's going on here in terms of the actual structure. So our Milky Way galaxy has quite a lot of neighbors. The two larger ones you can kind of see right there in the background. Here is the Large Magellanic Cloud, which you can easily see in the night skies if you're in the right location. And here is the Small Magellanic Cloud. But there are a lot more in this region. Here are just some of the larger ones, but if you were to try to find all of them, you would discover a list of over 50 different smaller galaxies that um, kind of exist around the Milky Way and some of them we only recently discovered. But the main point of the study is that it seems a lot of these smaller galaxies used to orbit other galaxies, like for example Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud. In other words, they were the satellites of a satellite. And one of the main discoveries here was that Large Magellanic Cloud had a lot of them, because it seems to possess enough dark matter to be able to hold on to quite a lot of various objects. But turns out Milky Way is just so much better because it's obviously more massive. So it kind of took those galaxies away, it stole them, and it's now officially absorbing them, adding their total mass to the mass of our galaxy. And although this doesn't really come as a surprise that, you know, our galaxy is massive enough to absorb other galaxies, this does create a very unusual era for our galaxy, which suggests that we are now in the middle of the largest galactic merger in the history of our galaxy. With the approximate suggestion of total mass being about one third of the mass of the Milky Way being constantly added into our galaxy. All of this coming from these satellites that used to orbit other galaxies or even the galaxies like Large Magellanic Cloud that you see right here. Another important discovery coming from the study is that the assumption or the estimate for the satellite galaxies that we had previously may have been very very small, it may have been incorrect. Here's actually one such galaxy. It seems that there are a lot more of these small galaxies out there in the vicinity of the Milky Way than we believed. And what's even more interesting is that one of the suggestions here was that we may have to redefine what we think of as a galaxy. Because the scientists behind this paper identified certain locations that seem to have possibly a black hole, possibly a lot of dark matter orbiting around it, very few stars or even no stars, but there was a lot of gas. Would this still constitute a galaxy? Does a galaxy have to have visual um, properties? Does it have to have stars for us to consider it to be an actual galaxy? And this is really important. Because over the years we've identified several really faint galaxies. Here's actually one, here's another one, and here's a third one. All three galaxies here are really faint, they have very very few stars, but their total mass is really big. And all of this suggests that they have a central black hole, they have a lot of dark matter orbiting around it, they also have a lot of gas, but unfortunately not enough stars for us to easily see it. So in that sense, it's a very unusual object, right now we don't really classify them as anything special, we simply refer to them as diffuse dwarf galaxies. But this new study suggests that these are really common in the vicinity and some of them possess enough dark matter and enough mass to make them legitimate galaxies as well. But some of them have no stars whatsoever. So in that sense, we might need to one day redefine what a galaxy is. Or at least make it a little bit more clear what exactly these things are that orbit around the Milky Way that don't really have any stars. Another major confirmation was of course that a lot of these smaller galaxies like this one right here, this is the Carina Dwarf Spherical Galaxy, were definitely part of the Large Magellanic Cloud and were the so-called stolen satellites. They've identified at least seven such smaller galaxies, all of them are now part of the Milky Way and are also slowly being absorbed by the Milky Way 
eventually kind of turning it all into one mega galaxy. And interestingly, one of the other suggestions is that there might be even smaller satellites around these satellites. So you could have a satellite of a satellite of a satellite. But because of the large structure like the Milky Way, eventually all of them will probably get absorbed as well. Which once again reinforces the fact that, well, we're in the middle of a very large galactic collision, we just can't seem to really easily see it because it's either a lot of dark matter colliding or it's much smaller objects like these dwarf galaxies that we've only identified a few years ago. As a matter of fact, last year we've discovered quite a lot of them and we'll probably discover a lot more this year as well. But what's interesting is that all of this may have only started about a billion years ago. So up until then, it's very likely that a lot of these dwarf galaxies were still satellites of, for example, Large Magellanic Cloud. So the Milky Way has become the so-called thief galaxy only relatively recently. And we think that in the next 3 billion years or so, it will very likely absorb everything around it. It's going to become a lot more massive, at least 30% more massive, when all of these dwarf galaxies are absorbed and become one with our own. And the other main suggestion coming out of this study is that we definitely need to investigate how many more of these unusual small galaxies are out there. And it's very likely that with new telescopes we'll be able to discover a lot more of these unusual galaxies, some of which were definitely very difficult to see up until now. And the more of these unusual dwarf galaxies we discover, the more confirmation we'll get that dark matter seems to be a real thing. There is really no other theoretical explanation for how these galaxies are able to exist, or how this, even though it's really difficult to see, can even stay together. Without dark matter, it would simply fly apart or not even be a shape at all. But it will definitely take a few more years before we can discover more about this unusual dark matter and before we can identify other similar galaxies nearby. And that's simply because most of them were, as of today, discovered completely by accident. And even though the Milky Way galaxy will probably end this collision and this absorption of other galaxies within about 2 billion years from now, it will then start another one, first with the Triangulum galaxy, and finally with the extremely large Andromeda galaxy. And eventually, all of this will of course create one massive galaxy. In one of the previous videos, I mentioned that this might be some kind of a super spiral galaxy, very similar to the ones we've only discovered a few years ago. There are about 100 super spiral galaxies we've found so far, and you can learn more about them in the video that should be somewhere above my head. But on this note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. If you like reading scientific papers, the study is in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.